Hi there, my name is Hilos David Hennen and I am from PAN, the Physicians Association for Nutrition. Welcome to our first Q&A session. From now on, this is where we answer your questions that you ask during one of our webinars or seminars that we couldn't tend to during the live event or that we think are so important that we would like to make the answer available to more people. Today, we're going to talk about two questions that have a similar background, namely the GI or glycemic index. The first question is, does the glycemic index say how much or how quickly blood sugar rises? The GI actually describes the area under the curve of the blood sugar response to a certain kind of food compared to the area under the curve after the intake of pure glucose or in some calculations also white bread. The GI is 100% if the area under the curve for a food item is the same as the one for glucose and below or above 100% if it's smaller or greater than the one for pure glucose. So the glycemic index contains information about both the rate as well as the total increase in blood glucose. This brings us to the second question, which is, do you have any data concerning the glycemic index of maltodextrin, which is often used as a source of carbohydrates in nutritional supplements? Now this is where it gets really interesting, and I invite you to lay back and let me take you on a little journey. When somebody asks me that sort of a question, which I don't know the answer to, but it sounds relatively easy to find, what I do before I put together an intricate search term for PubMed is a Google search, which I also did in this case. The first hit led me to an article from a fitness website about maltodextrin and the time and place for such high glycemic carbohydrates. In the article, I found the statement that on the glycemic index, maltodextrin ranges between 85 and 105, where the standard glucose is set at 100 which we discussed in the previous question. Unfortunately, however, the website itself did not provide a source for this information, so I kept on searching. This also led me to Wikipedia, where it says that maltodextrin has a glycemic index ranging from 85 to 105. Now, these numbers sounded really familiar for me, so I took a look at the source they provided, and it turned out to be the exact same article I found before. So for a while there, I kept on looking through the Google search results, but unfortunately, most of the sources provided either no source or invalid sources such as redirections to Wikipedia or this study where diets that included maltodextrin were tested in a specific kind of lab mice, leading some authors to the incorrect conclusion that the GI of maltodextrin was in fact 52. Now, there was this chart that I stumbled upon time and time again, which, as far as I understand, originates from a website called Sugar and Sweetener Guide. They actually speak of a glycemic index of 110 for maltodextrin, and they cite this searchable database by the University of Sydney as a source. To my surprise, the database did not list maltodextrin. No useful entries if you search for maltodextrin or different brand names directly for any sugar, sweetener, or syrup with a glycemic index greater than or equal to 80, or for any food with that property. Now at this point, to be honest, I got a little frustrated with my Google search and I did what I really should have done at the beginning. I put together the intricate search term for PubMed and went through the studies. As it turns out, the online database from the University of Sydney is actually one of the most accurate tools you can find because the project is headed by Professor Jenny Brand Miller, who is the senior author of the International Tables of Glycemic Index and Glycemic Load Values from 2008, which is the most comprehensive and up-to-date print material on glycemic indices available. But that also means that most of the data in the online search tool actually stems from that paper. So this time it came as no surprise to me that there was no information on the glycemic index of maltodextrin in the original publication either. Now, this scenario led me to two questions. First of all, is this range of glycemic indices for maltodextrin true? And secondly, if it is true, why is it true? 
Now to answer the first question, there seem to be two more or less relevant publications that make a statement about the glycemic index of maltodextrin. Firstly, there is a 2019 Nestle study on how to accelerate the development of foods and beverages with lower glucose responses. And they set the glycemic index of maltodextrin at 110. They do so by averaging the GI values reported by the University of Sydney and cite the online resource that I had become so familiar with at that point. Okay, on to the second study. A comparison of isomaltulose versus maltodextrin ingestion during soccer-specific exercise. What do they think about the GI of maltodextrin? 90 to 100, but unfortunately this time without a citation for this value. Now, for the sake of the argument, from there on I just assume that these numbers are valid. But the second question still remains. Why is there such a wide variation for glycemic indices of maltodextrin? Well, to understand this, I actually found a really helpful publication this time. In Nutrition, Health and Regulatory Aspects of Digestible Maltodextrins, the authors point out that maltodextrins are produced by hydrolysis of starch from different botanical sources, you know, such as wheat, corn or rice. It is important to note, they say, that starch granules mainly contain varying amounts of two types of glucose polymers, amylose and amylopectin, which differ in molecular structure. Amylose is known to be less rapidly digested by pancreatic alpha amylase, thus, depending on the amylose content of the native starch, differences in blood glucose response will occur. And the amylose amylopectin ratio of the native starch also influences the digestive properties of the maltodextrins. This amylose amylopectin relation is reflected in the so-called dextrose equivalent, or DE. Free glucose, glucose being a synonym for dextrose, has a DE of 100. And depending on the native starch you start out with, maltodextrins are defined by having a DE between 20 and 3. So basically when you start out the production process with a starch containing more amylopectin, which is more easily broken down into glucose, you end up with a maltodextrin product higher in glucose. So what does this mean? Well, maltodextrins with a lower DE have beneficial properties for making ice cream, for example. And maltodextrins with a higher DE are useful for the production of things like potato chips, beef jerky, or also as sports supplements. However, these differences in dextrose equivalents and degrees of polymerization of commercially used maltodextrins also finally helped me to explain the variation of glycemic indices that multiple websites, as well as scientific publications, had claimed before. Where did the various authors get their numbers from? I still do not know, but at this point I honestly highly doubt that it was primary scientific literature. Now what's the moral of this little story? Well, first of all, a question might be much more difficult to answer than you first think it is, but more importantly, Time and time again, it becomes obvious that we should always question the information presented to us. Because it seems to me that, unfortunately, sometimes people look for data and, happy to have found something, they just copy and paste it. Unfortunately, when this is done enough times, it becomes exceedingly difficult to find reliable sources of information. Among other reasons, this is why we at PAN give our very best to thoroughly research the information we provide and continuously reevaluate and update our content and recommendations. We hope that this gives you the opportunity to make vital food choices, not having to rely on eminence, but rather on the best available scientific evidence.